everybody, it's Simon Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this block step card as part of my Valentine's series 2019. This is actually the last tutorial for this year's series, but I do have a few extra Valentine's themed projects, but I'm just going to pop them in with my other tutorials in the coming weeks. But for today, I'm going to be sharing this card here. Now, this came up in just when I was going through Pinterest, and I then popped it into YouTube and found the tutorial by Papercrafter45 and um, I thought I would give it a go. So this is my spin on it. It's a really lovely style. So you can see there how it looks from the side. I've decorated the top here with these flowers. The papers are the free downloadable flower um, papers from the craft blog along with this little, uh, little heart there which I die cut. Die cut all these flowers. I've covered them with my sparkle, Spectrum Noir sparkle pen. I cut these little butterflies a few times and then on the very back here popped a few more um, squares there just decorated and then I've done a bigger square here for you to write your message and the nice thing about this is the whole thing folds flat so you just pop it down like so and then I've just created this envelope here with the envelope punch board which I'll share with you at the very end that should always do it upside down that way you don't damage any of your embellishments and they don't get caught and you can see there it fits perfectly inside your envelope. So that's what we're going to make. So let's just put that one to one side. Um, that is my piece there. So you will need the envelope punch board but not till later. So pop that out of the way. And I've got everything here. So that's my paper for my envelope later. Some butterflies. So I've done a template for this one just because there's quite a lot of squares on it. So I figured it's always handy to have a template. Just got some embellishments that I want to use. And then all these pieces here. Keep that one, that one, and these ones here. And this is what I'm using to embellish later. So I've just die cut some butterflies there. Um, I just punched out some flowers. So I just punched out two of each. So there's two there on top of each other. And you just offset the one on top over the one on the bottom just to get a nice full flower. Just, you know, curl them up a bit. And um, I just popped a little bit of sparkle in the middle. And then I've just die cut a load of leaves, which I'm gonna be filling in and then I've just got this here from the Forever Free paper pack. This is the 8x8 paper pack. I just fussy cut one of the little cutout um, pieces there from one of the pages. And that's the papers I'm using as well are from Forever Free. But you only really have a very small amount of pattern paper. Right, this is the template. That will all make sense to you in a moment. But what you need to make this card is a, sheet, is a piece of 12 by 45 cardstock. Bring that down there so you can see that's better so yeah that was 12 by four and a half and then you want for a hinge you need a piece that's one inch by four and a half and then you'll need how many did i have here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven is that right yeah 11 pieces that are one and a quarter squared and then 11 pieces that are one inch squared the one inch ones, I just used my square one inch punch, so it was quite quick to cut all those out. So like I said, 11 of each of those sizes. As always, this will all be shared over on my blog and you can find all that information. Just click below this video and there'll be a little bit that says more. Click on that and it will bring down the direct link to this blog, to the blog post for this tutorial, so all the measurements and stuff. Because I do get a lot of people asking for the measurements, they're always shared below, all right? And then this piece here is a piece that is three by three, and that's gonna go on the back for you to write your message. Okay, so with your main piece of cardstock here, you are gonna score along the 12 inch side at every one and a half inch. So one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, and ten and a half. Okay, so just go through that again. One and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, and ten and a half. Okay, then rotate it onto the shorter side and you're gonna score again at every one and a half. So it'd be one and a half and three. Okay, then with your hinge, which is that one by four and a half, along the one inch side, you just wanna score a half an inch. So just down through the middle there. Okay, and then you can just burnish that one. And that's all ready to go now when we need to use it. Okay, get rid of your scoreboard. And 
what I've already done here is I've marked some pencil marks, that's just for me. This is when you'll want to use this template. So if you want to, I don't know, take a photo of this screen with your phone, or this will again be on my blog, I will take a photo of this. So you'll be able to just have that up on your screen as well. So you'll notice you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares in total. You come in two squares from the very top row and the next three you're going to cut away and you should have three intact on the other side. On your second row down you're going to come in three squares and the fourth square you're going to cut away. So you can see that whole section here that we're going to cut. These bits here are further cut lines but you're just cutting along that line. So there, there, the whole square is still going to be attached by these lines here. Okay, so again there and there. So first of all, what I would say is get your cardstock like I have here and just count in one, two, the third one put across, the fourth one put across and the fifth one put across, just like the third, fourth and fifth on the top here. And then come down where you've got the three on the second one directly below you put another cross, so you want to have this shape here. So I've got cross, cross, cross and cross, so I know that that's where I need to cut. Then these little pencil marks are basically just me redoing that there. Okay, so turn the whole thing around when you've got your crosses where you want them, and we can get this cut out. So what I would say, the easiest way to do it first is cut down the first cross, then cut all the way down, so you're cutting down past the first one and going all the way down so what I've just done there, turn that upside down, is I've just cut that one, which is this one here, and then I've gone and cut all the way down this one here, and now I'm just going to cut that line there, and then that next line there. Okay, so you can see there. Now it makes it easier for you to come in, sorry that one I was meant to go all the way down, like so. By coming in and cutting from the top first, you can see there I've got the whole two in the middle, then I've got this one and this one. All right. By cutting them first down that way, it will make it easy for you to get your scissors in now to cut all of the extra bits. So what you can do is lift this one up, fold it right over. This is how I find you get a much nicer cut and then go in here and cut this one out. Okay, so now I've removed that square. Just turn it around and you can see if I lie that down what I've done. Then come in from this side and you can cut that one. It saves you having to get your scissors under and all that kind of stuff. It just, I just found it much much easier to cut this out without it kind of messing with your card and just remove that piece there. So now if I lie that down on top of my template you can see what I've removed. So next we just need to remove this piece here but if you burnish that back and back again that way and then I can just grab these scissors here. Uh, do I want to go in that way? Yeah. And I can get right in there and just get a really nice cut because you are going to see all of this. So you do want to make sure that it's nice and neat. Like so. And then if you've got any bits you want to just tidy up a bit, I'm just going to come in with my snips and just remove a few of those score lines. Okay, so again, there's my template. I just lie this one on the top and you can see now what we've removed. So now what we need to do is cut these lines here. So this one, this one, this one and this one. And that's where I've got my little pencil mark there, there, there and there. But again, now you've got all of that removed, it's much easier to just go in now and just continue cutting. So that's that one there. That's all I need to do is cut. And then this one here, just cut. That's all you want to do is keep it attached, but just, just kind of just take them away from the side there slightly. And then that one, and then that one. Okay, I'm just going to grab my rubber, because you can see those pencil marks and just take that out. Once you put this together, all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, okay, I get it, because that's what I was doing when I first done it and then you kind of just wrap it and it, it comes together yeah it's an odd size and you kind of think god how's that going to make this card but it is it's clever I really like it um, there we go okay so now again you can see now that's it on my template and then you should just lift up those two like that 
and then those two like that. All right. At the top of this kind of step bit here, so this one here, you just want to burnish your fold your pieces down either side like so. Now you'll have one longer than the other, that's fine because this is going to be your base, like so. All right. Then the ones that you've cut, they are going to fold towards each other. All right, so that's the two there. And then these two folded ones, again, fold towards each other. Okay, you can see there. Now, this bottom one, so this side you've got one, two, three, four squares. If I turn it over on this side, you've just got three. But you want it so it's this way, so you've got your steps going up that way on the left. So you want your flat side on your left as opposed to that side. You can have it this way, to be honest. It's entirely up to you, but I just think it visually just seems to work just looks better this way but anyway that's my my own choice this bottom one you're going to fold in so now you've got both sides the same okay and then because now your join is going under this is the back here and this is where this hinge is going to come into play the ones facing you you want to fold the ones down below a bit below the ones at the back down first and stick them over the top that way you get a nice continue continued piece of cardstock whereas if I put that one over the top you're going to see the join so make sure you put them over the back ones like so you imagine once your hinge is in place there it all is it just kind of comes together now I like to stick these down first and put my hinge in last okay so what should we do it first you may decide you want to do it differently so what I'm going to do first of all is I can still see a little bit of pencil there let's just take that one out there we go so I'm going to use my Tombow glue. Again, if you're using a wet glue and it's a tacky glue, just make sure that you don't go really close to the edges. So I'm just going to go really sparingly. I'm not going to use a lot at all. I'm just almost pushing around what's now already on the cardstock, like so. And I'm going to stick that one really nice and neatly. Make sure they marry up perfectly because they're both the same size. And just stick them down okay and then again going on the back one first because I want that to go on the bottom just again very very thin amount as I said before you don't glue better when there's not a lot of it <laughs> okay and again stick that one really nicely over the top okay so now we've got our base open and this is when I find it just easier to put the hinge in place. So what you're going to be doing is sticking inside one piece on the bottom and then that will allow you to stick that together. So with your hinge, with it folded so you've got a mountain fold like so, just take little wedges off because again you don't want this sticking out the side of your card like so. I'm just going to burnish that a little bit better. There we go. Again, I'm going to use wet glue. If you want to use your, obviously your um, tape, you can. Okay. And then with the bottom one, popping this inside. All right, you're sticking inside it there. So just make sure you get that nice and lined up. So you can see there. And there it is stuck inside. Okay, and now you want to put glue on this side, and then this back piece now is going to stick on that. And you want it to look like it was one full piece of cardstock, really. So you want to really kind of hide that hinge, like so. Pop it on its side and just go in there and just make sure we flatten both of those hinges down. I'm going to give that a minute to just set, okay, and there is your step block card. And now what I would do is just start to kind of work that hinge part, so that's how you will fold it in the envelope. And just kind of really work in all of those folds now, and then again it comes back up. Once you've got all your mats and layers on it will sit much, much better. And just, yeah, just make sure it's all nice and, yeah, it should have a perfect shape. You can see there it's equal on both sides, sits nicely there, look down that side, a little bit there, I need to just line it up a bit but you can see now there, and there it is.
a blank canvas ready to decorate. So like I said, that template will be on my blog. Now I've got all of these here, and these are enough to cover all of your front, all of the tops here of the step, and then, so there'll be three, so that's the three for the steps, and then you will have just two for the back, which will go there and there, because this piece is going to go there, and that's for my message. Okay, so I'm going to go and get all of that stuck down. Okay, and that's all stuck down. What I would say is maybe if you're going to put a lot of dimension on the front, um, don't put this one on until you know who you're going to give it to. But even now, you can just lie that down flat and you can still write on the back of that. But already that has become really, really strong and you really get to see the cube or block effect now that you get with that just by adding those mats and layers. So I really, really like it. So now it's just down to the decoration. So I've already... Like I said, done all these pieces. This is now a Bethy card. I know it's part of my Valentine's series, but I don't need any more Valentine's cards. So um, I showed you that one at the beginning. But I'm going to pop that one, I think, there and build up flowers around the bottom. Something like that with leaves coming out of the sides and then I've got these three I did like that are going to go on the top of each one there and then I've got the butterfly so I'm going to have this on high speed so you can still watch me do it but I don't think you need to actually watch me painstakingly at normal speed do it so <laughs> enjoy what I do next. Okay guys, so there's my finished step block card, block step card. Um, I think it looks really, really nice. These ones here, you might have seen me in the tutorial, they're just more of those flower, um, the butterflies that I like to buy, and they're the 3D ones. But personally, this is just me, I don't like the holographic behind, the trim. I just don't like it. I think for me it limits me on when I can use them, so I just peel that bit off, and I think it makes them look quite realistic they look a lot more and the good thing about these is you can send them in the post and because they're plastic they can lie flat but they will automatically pop straight back up again so you can see there the dimension you get with them and they just look really really nice so I've just got a load of black and white ones I picked these up from the range I got one two I got three packs and they're all different but these are gorgeous look at those absolutely stunning but for me just the single layer I prefer but they are a sticker so you just peel off this holographic back there anyway so yeah so that's the card how cute is that really really nice and obviously you've got the back you can put more flowers there and also when you go to fold it flat bearing in mind it's going to go like that you can have more kind of overhanging here because you have actually got all this free space in your envelope but you don't want to go over this side so you can see that i've just made sure i keep my flowers not kind of overhanging too far but now when that comes out of the envelope it will stand up on its own perfectly love it Right, envelope time. So, to make the envelope for this one, you want to follow, it's a four and a half by six card size. So just right down here, four and a half by six, it's telling you you need a piece of eight and a half by eight and a half paper. Your first score line is going to be at, well, I've lost it, three and three quarters. All right, now I have this paper pack, which was purchased from Every Crafts a pound, and I think it was three pound. And it is a bumper, bumper pack, a hundred papers. And they are just that, they are papers. So they're slightly thicker than copy paper, but they are perfect for making envelopes. Now, this was purchased quite a while ago, but it's by Grace Taylor. Paper pad is Bohemi. Bohemi? Yeah, it's not Bohemian, is it? So it's bo Bohemi. I'm probably saying that completely wrong. Um, all the normal gump that it says on it. But yeah, it's really, really handy. So I will have a look, but they do just lots of prints. Obviously they're great for matting and layering, you know, your, your cards, but they are really, really good for envelopes. So that is what I've used for both of these. So this is from the pack, which is that one there. And then I've got this one now, which is this one here. So you get how many, four of each, and there's 25 designs. 
but it's huge and really heavy. Okay, so I've already cut that down to eight and what did I say it was? Eight and a half by eight and a half. So I'm going to pop this in here. And again, my memory is terrible. Three and three quarters. So pop it in and then you line up your side here to three and three quarters. I do have a tutorial to how to use this and I will pop that up now so you can always go to that. Score. And then I like to flip the whole thing around and do the opposite side. And then I just follow my score line. So that score line I'm now going to follow with my score guide. I am doing this quick. I'm not teaching this, guys, because like I said, I do have a tutorial for that. This is just to show you quickly how you how it all kind of works. And that one there. Okay. Get rid of the scrap. Just going to round off that one there. And then just... Oh, no, I rounded off the wrong one. It's the longer one I want to do. Let's do them all. <laughs> okay. Burnish all of your score lines. And then grab some tape. And just... I always bring it up about half an inch from the actual side there. You don't need much, you don't need to cover it all. Just enough. And there it is. One envelope ready for my card. I think that matches quite nicely. You can see it fits in there perfectly. Like I said, when you go to put them in your envelope, put them in upside down and then when the person receives it, they will know to move it around and kind of position it in place. But I think these are really, really good. I wish I'd kind of come across this before because most cards I've kind of seen, but this one, I saw it and I thought, oh yeah, I like it. How cute are they? Really, really fun, and they're nice size. I think it's, they're a little bit smaller to what I usually do, so they, they look quite cute. I think that's maybe what I'm kind of drawn in for, um, towards them for, but these would look lovely for a baby's card, because obviously you can do the, the blocks as like building blocks, and also you can do something decorative with them. You could have them reversed, and yeah, I mean, yeah, you know what I mean. See what you can do and share them over on Mixed Up Crafters because I'm sure there's going to be some lovely versions coming about. But there you have it. So that is it. That is it for this year's Valentine's series. That's obviously the Valentine's themed one. But even that actually <laughs> you could you could probably do as a birthday card. But anyway, um, I thought I would throw it in for this series. But I do have a couple of others. But like I said, I'm just going to share them over the next coming weeks with all the other tutorials. But I hope you've enjoyed the series. I've loved seeing... Um, all the different versions over on my Facebook page it's been really really good and I've had loads of lovely comments and emails saying that you've been enjoying it so yeah that's it for this year but I will be back again on Sunday with my scrapbook layout and Monday with my normal tutorial okay guys thanks for watching bye